Hey, John here. So I've got this uh, steel T, uh, looks like it says TS350. Ooh, super, super dub. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with it. It's got dropped off. Guess it doesn't run. So let's go and see if there's any spark to this. And uh, go from there. And then go to compression. And if it's got spark and compression, then we'll just attack the carburetor, see what's doing. So I'll have to do this the old school way. I don't even know if I have this spark plug, SP34. I seriously doubt that. Let's try to round this out. Oh yeah. Alright, so it does it does have spark. Let's see how much compression this puppy has. Then, we'll go to the carburetor. Let's see. Get away from me. That's close to 90. Close to 90, so uh, that should get things started at least. Looks like 89, somewhere in there. So I don't think it's a compression issue. So like I said, I've never uh, messed with one of these, so it's just an engine. Spark of gas, right? Spark fuel, air, and that kind of thing. That's just the way. Probably this carburetor's all gummed up. I don't know what kind of carburetor it is. Let's have a look-see, see what happens. Did these come off of there? It actually looks pretty clean. Off here. See, yeah, looks like it. Huh. It actually looks pretty clean. I'm gonna have to flip this up. See, do we have anything holding this up over here? No, it kind of just comes off of there. No help, no carburetor. Looks like a secondary filter. All kinds of filters. That one's actually kind of that's got some powder to it. What else? What else we got? Let me get a light in there. Let me flip this up so we can uh, look at things. Well, before we get too crazy, you can see the carburetor in there. Well, I don't know if you can or not. I'd have to go down a little bit more. But we're just going to shoot some stuff in there. Let's open that choke up. Oh, it is open. Let's uh, give it a little toot. That might be too much. <laughs> Yeah, let me point this cell up a little bit so it stays in there, and then we'll uh, see if her, see if she bumps over. Let's try that right now, anyways. Close the chip. Oh. One of the bumps. Huh. So it does want to start, just from fluid alone. I guess we'll keep going and take this carburetor apart, see how easy or hard it is. Let's keep going here. See if we can get this housing off. Now this one, I better try to shut your choke in case that washer wants to <laughs> get swallowed up. Takes care of that. All right, so get the housing for the carburetor off. It'd be crazy if this thing just comes right off, just taking this bolt off, right? Let's see here. What do we have? Is she coming apart? Oop. There's that. see anything that's impeding. There's this on off switch which looks like it could be unplugged. You gotta be kidding me. So 
So it appears this thing just comes right off. And your trigger mechanisms, uh, everything stays on. You can get right to the carburetor. Sweet. That's yeah, a little gummy in here. So I'm assuming this, uh, this would just pop right off of there, like a little push pin deal. Yeah, a little, a little bit of a, uh, you know, male to female contact for a switch. And that's all we have. And like I said, that choke thing just is this ring that grabs this, uh, or maybe it's this one. Yeah, grabs the choke lever, moves it up and down. So so far so easy. Two tools, 27 Torx, and uh, whatever heck ratchet nut that was. So this might be just a dirty carburetor. Get away with it for nothing here. All right, so it's looking like a uh, just a 10 millimeter. That we can get a wrench in, hopefully. Yeah. She turned. That one turned. Yep. So. I don't give you much room in here, but it looks like uh, you can spin these nuts off. And then I guess they won't come off. Huh. That's a bizarre situation. It's running right into the rails here. You can't take them off, but I bet you... Uh, I bet you, if we loosen that... Uh, gasket. I don't know if that's going to be possible. We can lift this carburetor up a little bit as we go. We're going to have to get the other cap, uh, gasket anyway, so. So as we go, if we can try to uh, lift them Get these screws out at the same time. You know? It's an oddball situation I got here. You can only go up so high. There we go. There's one. Two. Yeah, it's holding the cover on me. And just the gasket. Just the gasket. All right. Oh, she just ripped. She ripped. Gasket ripped. So we're going to need at least a gasket. But hey, I'll just leave that for a second. So I'm just trying to get this fuel line off. It does feel, it doesn't feel brittle at all. Just kind of twisting it. There we go. So the fuel line looks good. I don't see any cracks in it. And it seems pretty rubbery still, so I'm not going to mess with the filter or anything. There was the top of that uh, gasket, so we're going to definitely have to get that one anyways. All right, let's uh, blow this up. Wow, multiple, multiple layers of this thing. So I got to look this carburetor up. We're going to probably need a whole gasket set for this carburetor, bare minimum. Well, I'm usually a big fan of uh, not taking these apart and just buying a new one, slapping it on because they're cheap enough. However, and this sucker says it's made in Ireland. Who knew? So the odds of getting this exact carburetor for cheap, like through Amazon, because usually a carburetor is like, you know, 15, 20 bucks. This one, uh, it's actually got some. So I might have to get a kit for this. It's, looks like it's got a lot of layers and see what the kit cost and let me go look up see if this carburetor is actually available because it looks like uh, even if I buy a kit there's going to be a lot of cleaning involved there's a lot of uh, you know looks like a high speed low speed deal but I don't know now like I said never mess with one of these be my first uh, here we go there's some numbers here in the bottom so let me go uh, try to find if I can see this carburetor all right so I found a Tillerson carburetor that uh, it, it's the carburetor itself but the fitment is not the same. So this is a, for this uh, TS350 Super here. Um, and the carburetor that I found, uh, like I said, the same body and everything, but the, you know, the, the side pieces, this piece here, and uh, I think this piece here is different. 
and they have a, a shroud over the high low. I ain't worried about that. I think this, this piece is also slightly different, but this piece uh, I'm not worried about. That's just the idle control. Um, so as you can see, they got slotted screws there. So I'm hoping this carburetor only costs 16 bucks, so it's worth a shot. Otherwise, it's going back. But hopefully, uh, we can just ex exchange these parts, and the thing will work like a champ. I also found the the kit for this for seven dollars uh, to rebuild this this uh, carburetor. Uh, so I got this uh, kit in to rebuild this uh, carburetor, and I might have to do that. See if that works. Uh, but I got this same carburetor. Uh, this cost uh, I don't know, like seven eight bucks, something like that. And this carburetor cost uh, sixteen dollars. I haven't opened it yet, but it's the same carburetor, but it belongs on a, uh, a zero seven zero or zero nine zero. And I'm hoping that we can just take this stuff off of here, like I was saying, and uh, convert it. Let's see what we got here first. Let's see if it is the same carb. What's the sign? Well. $16 later, it does look the same. So it's not made in uh, <laughs> Ireland like this. Uh, Til uh, Tilson is made in, apparently made in Ireland. This is some kind of, uh, it's not a Tilson, P-I-O-I, -I -I, like some Chinese company. Uh, but let's see here. So it's got the, it's got the high and low there. They put it in this cage. I think this is probably coming out. It doesn't matter. I can see the slots. Uh, so the high and low. This piece, these two pieces here, one, two, they look the same. So I don't think I have to mess with that. This one's obviously different <coughs> than this. But it does look like I can uh, let's see what the uh, other side looks like. Again, different different but maybe we can use the pieces so I think it'll be easier to do that than uh, take this apart and uh, I might do that anyways and put a kit in there I don't know because this might not work out oh man I didn't see that so this carburetor is much better much better shoot can't use it so we're gonna have to rebuild it the throat's bigger Yeah, it's even the same. It's uh, bigger on this end. They ain't gonna bolt up. Well, I don't know. The flanges are the same. Huh. Actually, the flanges are the same, except that this new carburetor, everything's bigger. Bigger's better, right? Let's see. All right, so I think uh, we got another problem. So this is the old one. I just took that uh, the piece off the new one, but it's clocked different. Meaning, if I uh, if I take this out of the screws off, it won't go on this way the same position. It's over here, and it's closed right now. And there's no way that throttle's going to work. I mean, you can open it. That's why it opened, but that's fully closed, right? If you see over here, it needs to be like right here. All right, so it was close. I put this all back together the way it was. Um, you know, all the springs and all the choke mechanisms to the original state. I guess we're going to have to rebuild this one, see how my luck goes. Uh, this is a $16 gamble. And I'll see what we got here. I think uh, it's probably an 8 or a you know, the hex, but the screws are pretty loose. Doesn't look too bad.
expected. Expected something so expected to see something like you know obvious. And it could be just the needle in the seat, it's got something dirty clogged in there. doesn't appear to be that dirty. I'll be damned. But we're going to go ahead and take it apart anyways. And put some new parts in. So the needle and the seat, there's a spring under there, so keep the finger on there. Show my magnet uh, screwdriver. I think the kit came with this anyways. It doesn't look like it's gelled up or anything. It's really immediately springier. Huh. Well, I don't know. Looking around, doesn't seem that dirty inside. But then again, we're going to go ahead and blow and clean and squirt everything out. There's a uh, little washer in there, or a rubber, I don't know if it's rubber or fiber or whatever high speed and low speed. Most times the high speed and low speed are different uh, size screws, but in this case they are the same. Now that looks like a brass washer. Oh, I just stuck on there. So you got a brass washer and looks like a rubber, rubber piece. Pins are the same, very identical. Yeah, I'm going to take this outside and blow every hole out that I can see. High speed, low speed, actually. Let's take this thing out. I think this is a fixed screw. Let's see what's in here. Cleanable hole is what's in there. You know, you got them little holes that you got to clean out. Now, there was a little uh, ball bearing mechanism in there. That's what was the re resistance. new washer will fit in there. Yep, it does. We'll put the new one in there. You gotta kind of keep it at an angle. Get it in the hole. And the spring. And you can put this screw in. So we got the float and the pin in there. And sometimes these need to be jacked up, the tab, but I'm going to leave it there. Okay, this little uh, tab that I'm pointing to with a screwdriver, uh, there's a metering level tool that you can use. I have it for Zama and uh, a Walbro carburetor, but this Tillerson, I don't usually work on them that often. And uh, so I guess that the rule of thumb in here is just have this tab, you know, level with the base of the, the top of the carburetor there. Um, and then it, it should be fine. So I did pry this up just a little bit to get it level. Um, but if your machine is hard to start or won't run right, even after you adjust the high and low, it's a good possibility this tab is out of adjustment. 
Uh, but there's plenty of stuff on YouTube, I think, for metering tool. Uh, you know, just look that up. And I'm not sure where the tiller stand is supposed to be. But like I said, I just made it kind of level with the base there. And uh, in retrospect, it turned out all right. But uh, just letting you know. Yeah, so we'll put this back together. So I didn't see anything obviously wrong with this needle or the seat. And um, uh, what's next? We've got the regular gasket. None of these gaskets can go on backwards, so it's kind of foolproof. In other words, well, this one's kind of round, but it doesn't matter. But it doesn't, it doesn't align with a top hole, so they make it so you can't put them on any which way. New rubber diaphragm. Again, I'm a little bit hesitant to leave this like this. I almost want to pop this up a hair. I don't know what the tolerance is. Um, you know, as far as you can bend this, pry this up a little bit because when this goes up and down, it opens. It opens up the, uh, you know, the needle. See how it goes. So when this when this thing is pumping, it's letting the fuel in and out. And it's a good possibility that this was bent down too much. Like if you put this in there and it, and it was, wasn't doing its job to uh, let the fuel in, so that's a good possibility. Instead of, well, I mean, we, were, we had to take it apart anyway, so we might as well put the new gaskets in. But you would just bend this tab up just a little bit, like that. That bent up kind of really easy. And then uh, install it back in so it'll push down, so it'll lift up that needle. That's probably what was wrong with this because it's, it's, it's very clean. In fact, I want to just bend that up just a little more. Again, just looking at it, it's a little bit below level. So that looks level there. All right. Where was we? Let's try this. Um, where's the diaphragm? Put the diaphragm on backwards. Let's put it on right. All the holes line up. What's next? This little doohickey, this concave part goes down there to clean it up. Again, it can only go on one way, so you just find out where the dowels are. Pop her in. Next, we've got this gasket. Again, only one way. Then you got your filter here, or whatever you want to call it. The flapper. So if you try to put this on backwards, it just doesn't line up because it needs to go on one way, one way only. Um, <clears throat> now we'll get this piece. Then we put our screws in. All right, then your cork, the new cork. And your new uh, screen, filter screen, fuel filter for the fuel. And I'm not sure where this fuel uh, outlet needs to go, so I'm just going to put it on there loosely. And we can rotate it and then tighten it down. Because I had the marks there. Uh, actually, when we were doing this one, we left this one alone, so I can line this up so it belongs over right here, roughly. So, that should get us started. Let's go pop it on and see what happens. So I clean this area up a little bit, but this thing goes down. I gotta find all my uh, connections. Let's see that. That looks about right. It had no uh, <clears throat> no clamp on here, so I'm just gonna put it back the way it was.
these were the tens that were hard to get to. As long as we get them started, we'll be fine. Now, technically, without the housing on here, this thing should run the, you know, air filter, that big cone deal, because uh, we're going to need to adjust the, uh, the high speed and low speed, most likely. So I got to go get a wrench. We'll tighten that down, put the housing on, spark plug, kill switch, and we're good to go. <laughs> well, <clears throat> so it took a little bit. I took it outside, put some fresh fuel in it, and uh, I had to prime it a couple times, throwing fuel down the neck here to get it running. It does run. It doesn't run on its own yet because I, uh, we have to make some uh, tweaks here, but I think we can, this cover has a hole, a hole missing or a slot before we can do that. So putting this thing on is pretty straightforward. Um, the, the choke has got to be all the way back because like I said, it's just this lever. When you move the choke forward, it, it uh, let's see, it's got to be, it's got to be all the way forward when you put it on because when you slide the choke back, it's just moving this lever back. And it's in the, the metal piece is right here, so it's just, it's just kind of riding right here. So you need to slide this thing forward. And like I said, this is the throttle. And that's just, this, when you push the throttle, it's just this, this uh, well, you can't see it in there. Just a little rod that's sitting in here, pushing on that. So it's pretty easy. Uh, so we'll hook this, uh, this ground kill switch up. And just... Uh, well, on second thought, I'm going to um, actually put this thing back together because it might make a difference uh, when I tune it because it kind of has a snarkle deal with that whole, you know, rear filter thing. So I don't want to tune it now without anything on it uh, as long as we can get, we can get in there. Uh, I think we'll be fine because it starts and it runs. So there's that. So let's put this thing back together. I forgot exactly how this thing went back together, but I know this thing, we had to, uh, oh, I gotta get a gasket made for this. This gasket didn't make it, let me make one right quick. So I was <clears throat> able to get this thing on, a gasket in there, and I don't know what the level of this thing's supposed to be. I blew it out the best I could. Still can't see through it. Uh, so we're just gonna stick this back on. If it doesn't run, I know this thing's clogging it up. We have a pretty serious filtering system here. I don't think it matters which way that goes. It's got triple, triple the fun. Alright, that's a better. Now I can get this up right there. Of course, still can't see nothing. All right, so it's tuned, uh, starts, the kill switch doesn't work. I know I plugged it in, but uh, so you have to kill it with the choke. But uh, so what I did is, you know, I got it running. I had to use a little gas to keep it running. Did the low side first, and, um, and then wide open throttle, tweaked the high side needle until it cleared up, you know, whatever way I went, forward, backwards, didn't matter. And it runs good now, and um, it was on a little bit of a high idle, so we were able to get the, the idle down. So it should should run, I guess we'll try to cut a brick when it's got a mason stone on it. But let's see here, I don't think we need to choke it. Choker, but runs. Let's go cut a saw or a cut a brick. See if it'll cut a brick. I guess we'll see if it cut this little nub off, huh? Let's see here. Maybe I'll try to fix that kill switch. I don't know, but it works. Creates a lot of dust. I'll tell you that. 
Uh, so there you have it. TS, uh, what the hell was it? TS, uh, TS 350. Super. All it needed is a carburetor adjustment, probably. Like I said, that, that tab probably just needed to be bent up, but we wouldn't have replaced all the gaskets. It's actually not a bad cut. It's really smooth. Minus my miss there. I didn't go quite through, but. Huh. And it worked pretty good. Anyways, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Nice even cut. <laughs> See you next time.